Rwanda is a safe and prosperous country. Rwanda is not safe. Rwanda is exactly like, like Russia. Our new laws will make it crystal clear that Parliament's view is that Rwanda is a safe country. If you wanted to be safe in Rwanda, you have to keep quiet. We have a groundbreaking, world-leading partnership. Rwanda, we believe, is a safe country. Arbitrary arrests, people being killed, journalists being abducted. After last night's Commons vote, Britain will deport asylum seekers to Rwanda, says Rishi Sunak. Rwanda is safe. So why has his government been granting refuge here since the controversial bill was introduced to people who have fled Rwanda? People the Home Office accepts have a well-founded fear of persecution. I don't drink tea or eat anywhere. No to a cup of tea and no to any offers of food when we meet Abdul Karim Ali. You genuinely feel the government could poison you? Yes, it can. I'm always careful of whom I meet, where we meet, what I do, if I'm driving, how I park my car. This isn't just paranoia, he says. The Rwandan government's been accused of trying to silence overseas opponents. Mr Ali is vice chair of the opposition Rwanda National Congress. The British government says that Rwanda is safe, that they've got a treaty with the government, that they've got assurances. It is a, an insult to those who are seeking democracy, an insult to those who are being, who are being uh, tortured. As we speak right now, the jails of Rwanda are full of people who are there because of their criticizing or just speaking their mind, so they're prisoners of conscience. They are those who have lost their lives. A good example is Kizito Mihigo, who was a gospel singer. Hugely popular, Kizito Mihigo was once hailed by the Rwandan government. But when he dared release a song challenging the official narrative about the genocide, he was labelled a traitor. And the vocal artist Kizito, 38, was arrested last week. When Kizito was found dead in a police cell, the country's investigation bureau said it was suicide. Human rights activists questioned the circumstances. But it's not just those in Rwanda who feel at risk. Its government's been accused of targeting its own citizens abroad, including in the UK, something it denies. The fear has been instilled within me because we know the levels that they can go to we know how far they can go. His identity protected because he fears he'll be targeted for speaking out. We've interviewed a man we're calling Robert in his only broadcast interview. He was granted asylum after the government introduced its bill. The reason I had to leave Rwanda was because um, I was suspected of supporting the, the opposition. And were you involved in politics? Were you involved in... No, I was never involved in politics. It's just having, you know, an opinion. That's all it takes for you to even be on their radar. Neighbours don't trust each other. You know, friends don't trust each other. The next thing you know, police turn up in plain clothes, you know, coming to arrest you. And yet our government is going to send people there. They say it's perfectly safe. Makes no sense. You have people like me. I'm not the only one. There's more cases of people that have been granted asylum from Rwanda. So what does that tell you about the safety of Rwanda? Robert wouldn't be sent back under the government's bill. The Home Office told us it won't apply to Rwandan nationals alleged to be at risk there. But he worries about the fate of other asylum seekers. Now imagine if you sent an, an asylum seeker there and he goes on social media and says, you know what, I go to Rwanda and this is how they're treating me, this and this and this and that. If you keep getting into the ears of the locals, then we've got a problem. The Home Office told us Rwanda has a track record of welcoming asylum seekers and looking after refugees. They reject any suggestion the UK is operating a blind human rights policy with Rwanda. And yet as recently as 2021, British officials were outspoken about Rwanda's human rights failings, including allegations of extrajudicial killings, enforced disappearances and torture. But this was more muted after the bill. When the Supreme Court ruled Rwanda was unsafe last year, the Home Secretary went back to seek further safeguards, signing what she said was a stronger treaty. When you see ministers from Britain shaking hands with ministers from Rwanda and saying it's fine, it's safe here, 
How do you feel? It's all politics because the government can make all their assessments and say it's safe as much as they want. They've been using it as a car to, you know, sway votes, I think. Migrants would come across the channel in. Rishi Sunak hopes the Rwanda plan will keep his political future afloat by helping to stop small boat crossings. Although the Supreme Court ruled that the East African country isn't a safe destination, his controversial bill overrules this and declares that it is. The Prime Minister isn't the only one facing an election this year. This is Rwanda's President Paul Kagame, who goes to the polls in July. He's widely expected to secure a fourth term. In 2017, Mr Kagame declared victory after claiming to have won almost 99% of votes. Critics accuse him of running a one-party authoritarian state. It is a shame election, so if the ruling party does not other candidate to participate in the election. Victoire Ingabire is leader of an opposition group, a dissident and fierce critic of the president. In 2018, she was released early from prison after serving eight years. She'd been sentenced to 15, accused of terrorism, she says after contesting the 2010 election. I spent eight years in prison, and among them, five years I was in a solitary confinement. Uh, the cell where I was, it was a dark and hot cell. That's a long time in solitary confinement. Ms Ingabire has just been told that because of that conviction, she won't be able to stand as a candidate in July. It is not that the British government declared that Rwanda a safe country, that we make Rwanda a safe country. The government's bill will be back in the Lords tomorrow. Whatever happens, Rishi Sunak says he's committed to putting people on planes to Rwanda.